The history of Trinidad and Tobago begins with the settlements of the islands by Amerindians, specifically the island Carib and Arawak peoples. Both islands were explored by Christopher Columbus on his third voyage in 1498. Trinidad remained in Spanish hands until 1797, but it was largely settled by French colonists. Tobago changed hands between the British, French, Dutch, and Corlanders, but eventually ended up in British hands following the Second Treaty of Paris 1814. In 1889 the two islands were incorporated into a single crown colony. Trinidad and Tobago obtained its independence from the British Empire in 1962 and became a republic in 1976. Pre-Columbian period <inaudible> Native American settlement Prior to the arrival of Europeans, the island was inhabited by the indigenous Arawak people, and Carib people. The Caribs settled the northwest side of the island around Arima and Mucarapo, while the Arawaks concentrated to the southeast. Middens have been found in Cedros, Palo Seco and Aran. Topic: <inaudible> Spanish period. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> The arrival of Columbus. The first contact with Europeans occurred when Christopher Columbus, who was on his third voyage of exploration, arrived at noon on 31 July 1498. He landed at a harbour he called Point Galera, while naming the island Trinidad, before proceeding into the Gulf of Paria via the Serpent's Mouth and the Caribbean Sea via Dragon's Mouth. <laughs> Colonial settlement of Trinidad Trinidad is reported to have been densely populated at the beginning of the colonial period. Although in 1510 Trinidad was said to have the only peaceful Indians along the whole South American coast, demand for slaves to supply the pearl fisheries in nearby Isla Margarita led to them being declared Caribs and thus fair game for slavers in 1511. As a consequence of this, Trinidad and Tobago became the focus of Spanish slaving raids, primarily to supply Margarita's pearl fisheries. In 1530, Antonio Cedeno was appointed governor. Granted a contract to settle Trinidad, with an eye toward discovering long rumored El Dorado and controlling the trade in slaves, in 1532 he attempted to establish a settlement, but was driven off the island following the Battle of Cumucarapo, or the place of the silk cotton tree. He withdrew to Margarita, but he returned a year later and built a settlement at Cumucarapo modern Mucarapo in what is now Port of Spain. After failing to attract more settlers to Trinidad, Cedeno was forced to withdraw in 1534. In 1553 Juan Cedeno was authorized to settle Trinidad, but the contract was never fulfilled. In 1569 Juan Troqui Ponce de León built the Town of the Circumcision, probably around modern Laventil. In 1570 this settlement was abandoned. In 1592 Antonio de Berrio established the first lasting settlement, the town of San José de Aruña the modern Saint Joseph. Sir Walter Raleigh, who was searching for El Dorado, arrived in Trinidad on the 22nd of March 1595 and soon attacked San José and captured and interrogated de Berrio, obtaining much information from him and from the cacique Topiawari. Lack of Spanish ships arriving on a regular basis, forced the settlers to trade with the English, French and Dutch, in violation of the Spanish exclusive. The Spanish also lacked the means to defend the colony, which consisted of only 24 Spanish settlers in 1625. Thus the Dutch attacked St. Joseph with impunity in 1637. By 1671, the island included 80 settlers and 80 domesticated Amerindians. By 1772, the Spanish capital of St. Joseph had a population of 326 Spaniards and 417 Amerindians, yet the houses consisted of mud huts with thatch roofs. In general, lacking gold, the island was poor and undeveloped, inducing many to leave. The Captaincy General of Venezuela, Spanish Capitania General de Venezuela, was created on September 8, 1777, through the Royal Decree of Graces of Charles III of Bourbon, to provide more autonomy for the provinces of Venezuela, include Trinidad, previously under the jurisdiction of the Viceroyalty of New Granada and the Audiencia of Santo Domingo. 
The Crown established a unified government in political governorship, military captaincy general, fiscal intendancy and judicial audiencia affairs. Its creation was part of the Bourbon reforms and laid the groundwork for the future nation of Venezuela, in particular by orienting the province of Maracaibo towards the province of Caracas. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Colonial settlement of Tobago. In Tobago, the first Dutch colony of New Walcheren, New Walcheren, was short-lived. 68 colonists established Fort Vlissingen. Fort Flushing, near modern Plymouth in 1628. They were reinforced by a few hundred more settlers from Zeeland in 1629 and 1632. Attempted colonies by Courland in 1637, 1639, and 1642 and England in 1649, 1642, and 1647 all failed. In May and September 1654, Kurish and Dutch colonies were re established successfully. The Kurish colony of Neu Kurland New Courland was centered at Fort Jacob on Great Courland Bay. The Dutch colony on the other side of the island had three forts, Lampsinsburg, Beveren, and Bella Vista. In 1658, 500 Frenchmen joined the Dutch colony but formed their own settlement called Three Rivers Le Courtier des Trois Rivières. On the 11th of December 1659, the Courlanders peaceably surrendered their colony to the Dutch. At the time, the island held about 1,500 Europeans and around 7,000 African slaves working on 120 plantations, supporting six or seven sugar mills and two rum distilleries. British Jamaican pirates captured the island in January 1666. The official English garrison surrendered to a French attack in August the same year. The Dutch Admiral Abraham Kreinsen reclaimed a deserted colony in April 1667 and re established a fort. An attempt to restore the Kurish Fort Jacob was suppressed in December 1668. In December, 1672, the British attacked and destroyed the Dutch colony as part of the Third Anglo-Dutch War. Dutch control was regained under the status quo anti provisions of the Second Treaty of Westminster in 1674. In September 1676, Fort Sterishens was constructed near the ruins of Fort Vlissingen. This star fort was reinforced in February 1677, but French attacks in February, March, and December of that year finally succeeded in killing the Dutch governor and capturing the island. In 1749, Britain and France agreed to keep the island neutral, but Britain took control after 1763, prompting France to capture the island in 1781, then Britain to recapture the island in 1793. The population in 1771 was 5,084, of which only 243 were white and 4,716 were slaves. In 1791 the population was 15,020, of which 541 were white and 14,170 were slaves. There were then 37 sugar factories, 99 cotton factories, and 4 coffee factories. After nutmeg was discovered in 1768, 40 nutmeg plantations were started. The island became a British acquisition for good in 1802, with a ratified treaty in 1814. <laughs> <laughs> Spanish missions in Trinidad Spanish missions were established as part of the Spanish colonization here as in its other new New World conquests. In 1687 the Catalan Capuchin friars were given responsibility for the conversion of the indigenous population of Trinidad and the Guianas. In 1713 the missions were handed over to the secular clergy. Due to shortages of missionaries, although the missions were established they often went without Christian instruction for long periods of time. Between 1687 and 1700 several missions were founded in Trinidad, but only four survived as Amerindian villages throughout the 18th century, La Annunciata de Nazaret de Savannah Grande modern Prince's Town, Parisima Concepcion de Maria Santissima de Gairai modern San Fernando, Santa Ana de Savanita modern Savoneta, Nuestra Senora de Montserrat probably modern Mayo. The mission of Santa Rosa de Arima was established in 1789 when Amerindians from the former encomiendas of Tacargua and Arauca Aruca were relocated further east they settled in Santa Rosa close to the town of Arima. In 1687 the Catalan Capuchin friars were given responsibility for the conversion of the indigenous population of Trinidad and the Guianas. 
In 1713 the missions were handed over to the secular clergy. Tensions between priests and Amerindians led to the Arena Massacre of 1699, wherein the Amerindians murdered the priests. After being hunted by the Spanish, the survivors are reported to have committed suicide by jumping off cliffs into the sea. <inaudible> <inaudible> French settlement in Trinidad Although Spanish settlement began in the 16th century, the census of 1777 recorded only 2,763 people as living on the island, including some 2,000 Arawaks. In 1777, Rumé de Saint Laurent proposed French planters from the islands of Martinique, Guadeloupe, Dominica, Saint Lucia, Saint Vincent and Grenada, and their African slaves, immigrate to Trinidad. He estimated 1,532 whites, with 33,322 of their slaves, would be interested in such a proposal. The Spanish gave many incentives to lure settlers to the island, including exemption from taxes for ten years and land grants in accordance to the terms set out in the settler. In 1783, the proclamation of a settler of population by the Spanish crown granted 32 acres square meters of land to each Roman Catholic who settled in Trinidad and half as much for each slave that they brought. Uniquely, 16 acres square meters was offered to each free colored or free person of color gens de color libre, as they were later known, and half as much for each slave they brought. French planters with their slaves, free colorids and mulattoes from neighboring islands of Grenada, Guadeloupe, Martinique and Dominica migrated to the Trinidad during the French Revolution. These new immigrants establishing local communities of Blanchisseuse, Champs Fleur, Paramon, Cascade, Carinage and Laventille. This resulted in Trinidad having the unique feature of a large French-speaking free colored slave owning class. By the time the island was surrendered to the British in 1797 the population had increased to 17,643 to 2,086 whites, 4,466 free people of color, 1,082 Amerindians, and 10,009 African slaves. In addition, there were 159 sugar estates, 130 coffee estates, 60 cocoa estates, and 103 cotton estates. Yet, the island remained unfortified. British period In 1797, a British force led by General Sir Ralph Abercrombie launched the invasion of Trinidad. His squadron sailed through the Bocas and anchored off the coast of Chagaramas. The Spanish governor Chacon decided to capitulate without fighting. Trinidad thus became a British crown colony, with a French-speaking population and Spanish laws. British rule was formalized under the Treaty of Amiens 1802. British rule led to an influx of settlers from the United Kingdom and the British colonies of the Eastern Caribbean. English, Scots, Irish, German and Italian families arrived. Under British rule, new estates were created and the import of slaves did increase, but this was the period of abolitionism in England and the slave trade was under attack. Slavery was abolished in 1833, after which former slaves served an apprenticeship period which ended on the 1st of August 1838 with full emancipation an overview of the population statistics in 1838 however clearly reveals the contrast between Trinidad and its neighboring islands upon emancipation of the slaves in 1838 Trinidad had only 17439 slaves with 80% of slave owners having fewer than 10 slaves each in contrast, at twice the size of Trinidad, Jamaica had roughly 360,000 slaves. On the 20th of October 1898, the British government made Tobago a ward of Trinidad. Topic: <inaudible> End of slavery. In August, 1816, 700 former slaves from the U.S. South, who had escaped to the British lines during the War of 1812 and had been recruited as a corps of colonial marines, were settled in Trinidad after serving for 14 months at the Royal Naval Dockyard, Bermuda. After rejecting British government orders for transfer to the West India regiments, and on the Admiralty refusing to continue responsibility for them, they finally accepted, but only with reluctance, a government offer of settlement in Trinidad. 
These ex-colonial marines were organized by the authorities in villages according to their military companies in Trinidad and Tobago as in other Caribbean slave colonies an attempt was made to circumvent the abolition of slavery in 1833 The first announcement from Whitehall in England that slaves would be totally freed by 1840 was made in 1833 In the meantime slaves on plantations were expected to remain where they were and work as apprentices for the next 6 years Trinidad and Tobago demonstrated a successful use of nonviolent protest and passive resistance. On 1 August 1834, an unarmed group of mainly elderly ex-slaves being addressed by the governor at Government House about the new laws, began chanting, Pa de 6 ans. Point de 6 ans. Not 6 years. No 6 years. Drowning out the voice of the governor. Peaceful protests continued until a resolution to abolish apprenticeship was passed and de facto freedom was achieved. This may have been partially due to the influence of Dr. Jean-Baptiste Philippe's book A Free Mulatto At the request of Governor Sir George Fitzgerald Hill, on 25 July, Dr. Jean-Baptiste Philippe the first colored member of the council, proposed a resolution to end apprenticeship and this was passed. Full emancipation for all was finally legally granted ahead of schedule on 1 August 1838. <inaudible> Agricultural development and indentured labor The sugarcane plantations which dominated the economy of Trinidad and Tobago in the 19th century gradually gave ground to the cultivation of cacao. Trinidad and Tobago chocolate became a high-priced, much sought-after commodity. The colonial government opened land to settlers interested in establishing cacao estates. French Creoles white Trinidadian elites descended from the original French settlers were being marginalized economically by large English business concerns who were buying up sugar plantations, and this gave them a fresh avenue of economic development. Venezuelan farmers with experience in cacao cultivation were also encouraged to settle in Trinidad and Tobago, where they provided much of the early labor in these estates. Many of the former cocoa-producing areas of Trinidad retain a distinctly Spanish flavor and many of the descendants of the cocoa panials from Espanol remain in these areas including Trinidad and Tobago's most famous cricketer, Brian Charles Lara. In 1844, the British government allowed the immigration of 2,500 Indian workers as indentured servants, from Calcutta and Madras. According to Williams, this was an effort to provide an adequate and dependable supply of labor. One third of the cost of passage, including return, was to borne as a public expense. Additional funds were provided for the Office of Protector of Immigrants, Medical and Police Services. Wages were set at $2.40 per month for males, and $1.45 per month for females. In 1899, the working day was fixed at nine hours. They could buy a plot of land in exchange for return passage. Between 1838 and 1917, 145,000 Indians immigrated to Trinidad. Many Indian immigrants who had completed their indentureship also established cocoa estates, most notable of them being Haji Gokul Maya, a Kashmiri-born immigrant who went on to the become one of the wealthiest men in Trinidad and Tobago. The Indian community has steadily prospered and grown until now it makes up about 35% of the population of the nation the largest ethnic group by about 1%. The arrival of witches' broom and black pod diseases in the 1930s, coupled with the Great Depression, destroyed the cacao industry in Trinidad and Tobago. Although prices for Trinidad and Tobago cocoa beans remains high on the world markets, cocoa is no more than a marginal crop. Relations between the Indian immigrants, and both the British, and the black population were generally strained, and occasionally erupted into violence such as the 1884 Husay massacre. Topic. Discovery of oil The American Merrimack Oil Company drilled an early oil well at La Brea at Trinidad and Tobago in 1857, where oil was struck at 280 feet 85 meters. Also mentioned as the pioneering work of Capt. Darwin with his Paria Petroleum Company Limited, and Conrad F. Stolmeyer, who was great-grandfather of Republic Bank's then-chairman, former West Indies cricket captain, Jeffrey Stolmeyer, an entrepreneur of that period who felt that a combustible fuel could not be distilled out of the asphalt from the pitch lake. 
The other point of view from Capt. Darwin was that a combustible fuel, refined from oil drilled from the earth, would be the ideal fuel for the future. In either 1865, 1866, or 1867, according to different accounts, the American civil engineer, Walter Darwin, discovered and produced oil at Araparo. Efforts in 1867 to begin production by the Trinidad and Tobago Petroleum Company at La Brea and the Paria Petroleum Company at Araparo were poorly financed and abandoned after Walter Darwin died of yellow fever. In 1893 Mr. Randolph Rust, along with his neighbor, Mr. Lee Lum, drilled a successful well near Darwin's original one. By early 1907 major drilling operations began, roads and other infrastructure were built. Annual production of oil in Trinidad and Tobago reached 47,000 barrels 7,500 cubic meters by 1910 and kept rapidly increasing year by year. Estimated oil production in Trinidad and Tobago in 2005 was about 150,000 barrels, d. 24,000 cubic meters, d. Topic. 20th century political development Trinidad was ruled as a crown colony with no elected representation until 1925. Although Tobago had an elected assembly, this was dissolved prior to the union of the two islands. In 1925 the first elections to the Legislative Council were held. Seven of the thirteen members were elected, the others were nominated by the governor. The franchise was determined by income, property and residence qualifications, and was limited to men over the age of 21 and women over the age of 30. The 1946 elections were the first with universal adult suffrage. Labor riots in 1937 led by T.U.B. Butler an immigrant from the neighboring island of Grenada shook the country and led to the formation of the modern trade union movement. Butler was jailed from 1937 to 1939, but was re-arrested when the United Kingdom entered World War II and jailed for the duration of the war. After his release in 1945 Butler reorganized his political party, the British Empire Citizens and Workers Home Rule Party. This party won a plurality in the 1950 general elections, the establishment feared Butler as a radical and instead Albert Gomes became the first chief minister of Trinidad and Tobago. The 1956 general elections saw the emergence of the People's National Movement under the leadership of Eric Williams. The PNM, opposed by Dr. Rudranath Kapildeo of the Democratic Labour Party and Ashford Sananan, who later founded the West Indian National Party WINP, continued to dominate politics in Trinidad and Tobago until 1986. The party won every general election between 1956 and 1981. Williams became Prime Minister at Independence, and remained in that position until his death in 1981. In 1958, the United Kingdom tried to establish an independent West Indies Federation comprising most of the former British West Indies. However, disagreement over the structure of the Federation led to Jamaica's withdrawal. Eric Williams responded to this with his now famous calculation, One from ten leaves not. Trinidad and Tobago chose not to bear the financial burden without Jamaica's assistance, and the Federation collapsed. Trinidad and Tobago achieved full independence via the Trinidad and Tobago Independence Act 1962 on August 31, 1962 within the Commonwealth with Queen Elizabeth II as its titular head of state. On 1 August 1976, the country became a republic, and the last Governor-General, Sir Ellis Clark, became the first president. In 1968 the National Joint Action Committee was formed by members of the Guild of Undergraduates at the St. Augustine campus of the University of the West Indies, under the leadership of Geddes Granger. In 1969 it was formally launched to protest the arrest of West Indian students at Sir George Williams University in Montreal. Together with trade unions and other groups, this led to the birth of the Black Power movement. In 1970 a series of marches and strikes led to the declaration of a state of emergency and the arrest of 15 black power leaders. In sympathy with the arrested leaders, a portion of the Trinidad and Tobago Regiment, led by Rafiq Shah and Rex LaSalle mutinied and took hostages at the Tetaran Barracks located on the Shagaramas Peninsula. However, the Coast Guard remained loyal and was able to isolate the mutineers at Tetaran as the only way out was along a narrow coastal road. After five days the mutineers surrendered. Political difficulties in the post-Black Power era culminated in the No Vote 
campaign of 1971 which resulted in the PNM winning all the seats in Parliament. In 1973, in the face of a collapsing economy Eric Williams was prepared to resign as Prime Minister. However, the outbreak of the 1973 Arab-Israeli War led to the recovery of oil prices and Williams remained in office. The high oil prices of the 1970s and early 1980s led to an oil boom which resulted in a large increase in salaries, standards of living, and corruption. In 1979, construction on the Eric Williams Plaza began. It would eventually finish in 1986. It remained the tallest building in Trinidad and Tobago until the construction of the Nicholas Tower in 2003. Williams died in office in 1981. The PNM remained in power following the death of Dr. Williams, but its 30-year rule ended in 1986 when the National Alliance for Reconstruction NAR, a multi-ethnic coalition aimed at uniting Trinidadians of Afro-Trinidadian and Indo-Trinidadian descent, won a landslide victory by capturing 33 of 36 seats. Tobago's ANR Robinson, the political leader of the NAR, was named Prime Minister. The NAR also won 11 of the 12 seats in the Tobago House of Assembly. The NAR began to break down when the Indian component withdrew in 1988. Basdeo Pandey, leader of the old United Labour Front Ulf, formed the new opposition with the United National Congress UNC. The NAR's margin was immediately reduced to 27 seats, with six for the UNC and three for the PNM. In July 1990, the Jamaat al-Muslimin, an extremist black Muslim group with an unresolved grievance against the government over land claims, tried to overthrow the NAR government. The group held the Prime Minister and members of Parliament hostage for five days while rioting shook Port of Spain. After a long standoff with the police and military, the Jamaat al-Muslimin leader, Yassine Abu Bakr, and his followers surrendered to Trinidadian authorities. Having had the matter referred back to the local courts by the Privy Council with a clear indication of a view that the amnesty was valid, in July 1992, the High Court upheld the validity of a government amnesty given to the Jamaat members during the hostage crisis. Abu Bakr and 113 other Jamaat members were jailed for two years while the courts debated the amnesty's validity. All 114 members were eventually released. Subsequent to this, the UK Privy Council deemed the amnesty invalid but expressed the view that it would be improper to re-arrest the 114 accused. In December 1991, the NAR captured only the two districts in Tobago. The PNM, led by Patrick Manning, carried a majority of 21 seats, and the UNC came in second. Manning became the new Prime Minister and Basdeo Pandey continued to lead the opposition. In November 1995, Manning called early elections, in which the PNM and UNC both won 17 seats and the NAR won two seats. The UNC allied with the NAR and formed the new government, with Pandey becoming Prime Minister, the first Prime Minister of Indo-Trinidadian descent. Elections held in December 2000 returned the UNC to power when they won 19 seats, while the opposition PNM won 16, and the NAR won. The UNC government fell in October 2001 with the defection of three of its parliamentarians amidst allegations of corruption in the then UNC government, and the December 2001 elections resulted in an even 18-18 split between the UNC and the PNM. President Robinson appointed Patrick Manning Prime Minister despite the fact that the UNC won the popular vote and that Pandey was the sitting Prime Minister. Despite the fact that Manning was unable to attract a majority and Parliament was thus unable to sit, he delayed calling elections until October 2002. The PNM formed the next government after winning 20 seats, while the UNC won 16. Both parties are committed to free market economic policies and increased foreign investment. Trinidad and Tobago has remained cooperative with the United States in the regional fight against narcotics trafficking and on other issues. The serious crime situation in the country has led to a severe deterioration in security conditions in the country. In addition, a resurgent Jamaat al-Muslimin continues to be a threat to stability. The FBI recently opened an office in Trinidad and Tobago in connection with its hunt for Adnan Gulsher el Shukrijuma. On 26 May 2010, Kamala Prasad Bissasar, leader of the People's Partnership, was sworn in as the country's first female prime minister. On 21 August 2011, she asked President George Maxwell Richards to declare a limited state of emergency. 
Dr. Keth Rowley is now Prime Minister. On March 19, 2018, Trinidad's first female president, Ms. Paula May Weeks, was sworn in. See also equals equals notes <laughs>